In this lesson, I will create a new Clover DX project and create a graph in that project. The graph will open a data source and read and write some data. This is Clover DX Designer as it looks immediately after installation. The welcome screen has an interactive guide you can follow to get a quick introduction to the Clover DX experience. You can visit this anytime by clicking Help, Welcome. For now, I'll close the welcome screen to reveal the main workspace. The workspace has several panels, all of which are currently empty. I'll start by creating a new project. You will see that a project is represented by a set of directories and files. This is our recommended project layout. We keep graphs in one directory, input and output files in their own directories. There are also directories where we can store database connection information and where we can store metadata, descriptions of the data that we are reading, transforming, and writing. I'll put some sample data into the project. I could just drag a file from the desktop into one of the project directories. But instead, I'll use the File Import menu to select a file. I'll import the sample data into my project's Data In directory. The sample data is a CSV file containing transaction IDs, amounts, and dates. The most common object in a Clover DX project is a graph. A Clover graph contains a collection of components configured to read, transform, and write data. I can create a new graph by clicking New Graph. I'll put this graph in the graph directory and call it Lesson 1. In the center of the screen is the Graph Editor panel, where I can build the graph. Below the Navigation panel is an Outline panel. This shows the logical elements in my graph. The components, the database connections, the metadata. My graph is empty, so my Outline and Editor panel are also empty. To the right of the Graph Editor panel is a palette of components. To build a graph, I can select components from the palette and drag them onto the Graph Editor panel. The palette groups components into categories based on function. There are groups for reading components, writing components, and transform components. I'll start by adding a flat file reader component to the graph. Components are color-coded, readers, are green. A double click on the component will display the property editor where I can configure the flat file reader's behavior. There are many configurable properties for the flat file reader, number of records to read, whether to skip records or trailing white space. The most important property, of course, is the name and location of the file to read. The flat file reader is in the graph and configured to read my sample data. Now I need to describe the data I'm going to read. I need to define the metadata, the number of columns, their names, and their data types. Clover DX can automatically extract metadata from most data sources. A right click on the components Extract Metadata brings up a metadata editor panel. I can see what Clover discovered about the data. Five columns, comma delimited, numbers, a string, and a date. Clover guessed reasonably well. I'm going to treat the account number column as a string for now, as that will be important in a future lesson. I also see that while Clover identified this last column as a date, it is missing the timestamp portion. So I'll modify the metadata definition, so we're sure to pick up the entire date-time field. 
I also will change the name of the metadata definition. By default, it is simply the name of the input file. I'll make it a bit more generic. Transactions underscore CSV. Click Finish, and I can see that this metadata definition is now in my graph's outline. Now, I have a reader component configured to read a file, and metadata, which describes the data I'm going to read. To confirm this is correct, I can test by adding a writing component to my graph and writing the data. As a first test, I will write the data to a simple writer component called trash. The trash component is often used during design and debug. It accepts data records, but does nothing with them. I'll select trash from the writer section of the palette. I'll connect the output port of my reader to the input port of my writer with an edge. And I'll assign the transaction CSV metadata to that edge. This is a complete graph. I can save it, and I can run it. Note Designer shows me that the graph executed without error. Each component has a green check mark. The edge shows I processed a thousand records. The console panel also provides status. It has a green background. I can see a series of time-stamped log entries, the final entry, showing that the graph finished OK. Errors, should they have occurred, would have been documented here and the console background would have been red. So, to recap lesson one, I created a project, imported some data, added a graph to the project, created some metadata, and used it to read and write some data.